Hey guys, thanks for joining us again. I'm Chris Beach, and this is Evansville High School Football. 100 years, millions of memories. Join me here in the studio today. He played at Bossy High School, the University of Evansville, and for the Chicago Bears. Please welcome Marty Amsler. Marty, thank you for taking the time to come out here and talk with us. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it. Well, as I mentioned, you played at Bossy High School. You graduated in 1960, so you played in the 1950s, uh, late 1950s, I would yeah. say. So what was it like playing at Bossy back then? Well, we weren't a winning football team. Um, you know, the, the, the winning football team in Evansville at that time, if I can talk about it, was Wrights. Mm -hmm. Wrights was a big, big powerhouse with Herman Byers and all that. Then you had uh, the Memorial Tigers, you know, they under Gene Logo. And they were, they were second. They, were, they always gave everybody a tough ball game. Um, for us, we played a good game. We, we played our hearts out, but we just couldn't win. Bill Russell was our coach at that time. Okay. Well, and then I understand uh, after your playing days, though, you helped on uh, the bossy sidelines. You actually mentored many players. Uh, I mean, how did you get into that? And what was some of the wisdom you would pass on to many young players? Well, I, when I got back here, uh, I wanted to do something with football. And I went over and talked to my bossy at the time, and they welcomed me. And I went over and helped with the line and whatever, and and pass on information on how to play the game, how to play it right, how to tackle, how to block, mm -hmm. all that. And, you know, to protect yourself. And also let them know that, you know, football isn't everything, but when you come to your last game in high school, for most of you, almost 99% of you, that's the end of football for you. And it's a real shame because it's, it's a wonderful sport to play. I miss it tremendously today, tremendously. And Marty, you had quite a uh, football career. I mean, you went on to play at the University of Evansville. It was called Evansville College at the time. Uh, you received All-American Collegiate Conference honors in 1964, and you actually became the first UE player drafted to the NFL. Uh, tell me about receiving that honor, knowing that you're the first University of Evansville ace to go pro in the NFL. Well, you didn't realize that you were, you know, you were one of the first to go pro until after it was done. But uh, my senior year, I got letters from all the different clubs of being interested in me. And I, I you know, I guess my, my play with different teams in the, con in the ICC conference uh, really brought, my, brought attention to those people on how I played. And to be one of the first drafted that, that was an honor like you wouldn't believe and that's a uh, honor that uh, you know it's like a record that can't be broken of course and uh, unless they bring it back which may not be anytime soon uh, there are not going to be too many uh, Evansville aces who go pro to the NFL there won't be any NFL football players because we don't have it anymore you know they they drop football. They're not going to take football back on because of the cost. It's very, very expensive. It is. It's a real shame that they dropped it because they could have kept going, you know, without dropping it. <clears throat> but they didn't. They, they made a decision. That's what you, what you stuck with. Well, speaking about the NFL, you were drafted to the Dallas Cowboys, but eventually you ended up in Chicago. You played for the Bears. And... Uh, you played next to a uh, very famous uh, name uh, with the Chicago Bears. Uh, you might have heard of him, uh, Dick Buckus. What a tremendous. He was our middle linebacker. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, you couldn't have asked for a better middle linebacker who kept everybody focused during the game. Um, I was quite fortunate at that time to play with Butkus, Sayers, and Brian Piccolo. You remember Brian Piccolo? Yes. That was a real sad. Yes. But he was a heck of a ball player. But we went out there, and I'll, I'll tell you what, if we couldn't beat you on the scoreboard, we sure beat you up physically. I mean physically. We, we went after you, and we didn't give up. And plus, we had George Hallis as our head coach. So, oh, you forgot to turn your t your telephone off. I apologize for shame. For for shame. That. I am so sorry. <laughs> uh, we, we can edit this. Uh, let me just start the question over uh, and we'll just uh, go. Oh, you want to? No, leave it go. I think this is wonderful. <laughs> so to see. Look at him. I am embarrassed. And you're not a head. Why? I think it's great. That's 
Well, we're all human. We are human. We are human. Uh, okay. Uh, again, we were talking about Dick Buckus. Uh, what was it like playing next to a player like Dick Buckus? Uh, he was our middle linebacker. He called all the plays. And, um, you know, some teams played so that they protected that middle linebacker, you know, pinch off on the line and so forth. We didn't do that. We went man for man on the line, and he was on his own to challenge whoever came out for him, whether it be the center, the guard, or the tackle. And I'll tell you what, he was one heck of a ball player. I mean, he met him head on and didn't take any guff from anybody. And... I still see him today. We laugh about certain things, but he is just a tremendous, tremendous ball player and a friend. Well, sounds like it. And the Bears, they actually did not play at Soldier Field back then. There was a Soldier Field, but you guys played your games at Wrigley Field at the time. I mean, what was that like? Well, number one, you got to use that as a, uh, as a, um, I, what do I want to call it? Uh, a question. A trivia. A trivia question. question. Yeah. But, yeah, we used uh, we used the Cubs dugout. We used that. We 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 practiced during the week at at, at uh, Wrigley Field. Um, it wasn't like playing at Soldiers Field. Soldiers Field at least had carpeting or grass all over. You had the part of the infield they tried to cover up and all. And uh, but it was a great place to play. And we, you know, the the fans loved it. You know, it was nostalgia. At its best, it really was. It brought back the old time. Everybody was around hugging you, and mm -hmm. it was great. Well, you were also part of the NFL Players Association for several years, and concussions, that has been a major topic for you. Uh, can you talk about that? Yes, I can. I was on the board of the National Football League Players Association, and one of the sub side boards that I was on was a concussion board. And we developed all the, all the workings for what you do on concussions, how to deal with them. Today, they now go back and they, they, um, they look at each ball player. Mm -hmm. they, they give him a thorough workout. In fact, my wife and I have been on a, an airplane sponsored by the NFL to the Cleveland Clinic. Mm -hmm. And we spent a week there, and they examined me like I've never been examined before. But they've, they've done that because there's a lot of guys with concussions, with delusion, and they have um, Alzheimer's and so forth. Plus, they also set up a program where they receive money. I had a real good friend of mine that played next to me. He died. He was... Uh, Two years later, I told his his daughters about it. They got hold of a lawyer, and they won a $2 million settlement from it because when he went in the nursing home, he had Alzheimer's at that time and died with it. Wow. <clears throat> Well, wow. and, uh, you know, we talked about concussions. That is something uh, talked about a lot in football. And there are a lot of parents who say they would not let their kids play football because they're of uh, fears of concussions. I've even heard former NFL players say they probably wouldn't let their kids play football. I mean, do you think, though, there have been a lot of improvements in the game to try to keep young players safer? I think there has. <clears throat> All your uh, equipment manufacturers have done a wonderful job. Rodell, Wilson, uh, Rawling, all those guys have done a lot to, to protect the individual. And, you know, they say not a, not, they don't like playing football, but I'll tell you what, they get concussions playing basketball, hockey, every sport there is. There's not one of them that's safe. But it's how you play the game, and if you're going to make a tackle, make sure you don't tackle with your head. You lay your, lay your head on the front of the guy, wrap your arms around and bring him down. You protect that head at all times. Yeah, no time. I didn't do that all the time now. <laughs> I will tell you that. But you know, we weren't we weren't reckless with it like you see a lot of ball players. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> since your playing days, uh, how much do you think the high school game or just football in general, how much do you think the game has just evolved over the decades? Oh, I think I think to take a look at uh, local football, uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm for it. They have alumni groups now. 
and uh, everybody really supports these guys that are out there playing football. And they keep trying to improve that year after year. Bossy's trying to do it. They have a heck of a time because they don't have the large amount of, of, of children to pull in for that. I don't want to say kids, but, but children. Um, <coughs> you know, Rice has their own, what I want to call it, like a farm team. Yeah. Yeah, we know all the little deals out there play the same uh, football the right has. Good development system, yeah. yeah. Central has that, but Bossy doesn't have a great one, but they, they're, they're coming around. They've, they've got a good quarterback in uh, Bamie. I played with his father at, at the college, and it's, it's kind of neat to see, um, to see some of these guys, especially when they're the sons of the guys I played football with. I don't have, I've got ball boys, or a boy and a girl. My son didn't play football. <clears throat> I wish he had. Well, Marty, I, I really thank you for taking the time to come out here and talk with us on this, uh, sharing some great stories, <clears throat> amazing career, an amazing impact that you've had just on the game, football in general, all together. Thank you so much for coming out. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure, and if I can ever do anything else, let me know, please. Well, we'll definitely keep in touch. Well, remember to follow us on tristatehomepage.com as we continue to celebrate Evansville High School football. 100 years, millions of memories. I'm Chris Feach. He's Marty Amsler. We'll see you on the next drive.